With with Ti? With um with Ti. Um, yeah, I heard about it. How, what are your thoughts of, of the Godfrey situation? Godfrey is a purist, like yeah. when it comes to comedy, and uh, I don't think he said nothing wrong. It what? was just the way that um, Ti came in. I guess he came up after the headliner, and that's why he. That was the only reason he had a problem. Like right, right. Um, so it was funny. I remember when Ti said uh, he said I'm not. A, I don't know. I can't do a Ti. How do you how do you do Ti's accent? Expeditiously. How do you do? Yeah, you did a good one. That was <laughs> great. Expeditiously. Uh, I'm a superstar. I'm not. I'm you got not a dash a, of Cat Williams in there. Oh, uh, there it is. Kinda, yeah. Um, when when he said that, it, it actually kind of the more I thought about it, the more it kind of irritated me mm-hmm. because it feels like incredibly disrespectful to the craft of stand up. Mm-hmm. And I know he, he was talking about how like, well, you know, all these uh, comedians want to be rappers now. And it's like, yeah, but there's a different process in becoming those things mm-hmm. that I, I don't think he obviously doesn't know anything about. Um, and I don't know, do you do you feel like, no, you didn't get to? Oh, cause I didn't. Uh, the apparatus, here it is. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like, what? what yeah, about? Um, but do you, do you feel like is comedy? Re- I can't tell if are we respected? Are we more respected than we used to be? Because it seems like it. But but then moments like that remind me, like uh, people don't really understand how this works, what the game is. Um, I think more people now want to. Uh are curious about doing stand-up because it appears to be so easy, but it's not as easy as people make it seem. That's why they are goats and legends, you know? So, right. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the only, like, downside. But if people want to try out new things, you know, go right ahead. If you want to be Donald Glover out here and do four or five things, that's fine. I don't, you know, I don't like to be boxed in, and I wouldn't want nobody to box me in either, so. Do you think you're going to branch out from comedy once you get super famous in comedy? You're going to do a Kevin Hart and, you know. I mean, I would love a whiskey <laughs> brand for women, but, Ooh, you know, okay. <laughs> we'll keep that under wraps for now. <laughs> for and I know you, okay, last night when we were talking, you said um, you've been watching comedy, which ma- it makes so much, I'm really glad we're finally getting to talk about this on the podcast because it, it makes so much sense now. When you said, I remember we were talking at Coles and you were saying that, like you've been doing about a year and some change. I was watching you. I was like, this doesn't feel like someone who is just getting into comedy like that. Like you have, you clearly understood, um, like you had a clear technique and a confidence and a comfort. And it's not that fake bravado comfort that comes with beginning comedy. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, like it, you got to put on airs. Yeah, to, yeah. I've know. seen people who who do pretty. They can ride off of that energy and that confidence for a little bit in the beginning Mm -hmm. because they're imitating someone that's confident they're just kind of good at it black i think black women are fucking fantastic at doing this like Mm -hmm. this um this in control type of energy Mm -hmm. um so this will be the i'm gonna reiterate this is the first time uh we'll be smoking on the podcast so this is (laughs) i already forgot what the fuck i was trying to (laughs) What was I trying to say? Uh, stand-up comedy. You watched comedy. So how did you... What was the beginning? The or the origins of Ali's comedy journey? Um, well, I used to get... Okay. Well, my dad, uh, he's always been like a comedian, you know. Like, he's like one of those people where he just tells jokes wherever he is and then people laugh. And he a natural, right? Of course. And so he actually won um, a Miller Lite uh, comedy competition back in the day. Oh, he's a literal comedian. Oh, well, I thought you meant he was just funny. Oh, I mean, okay. he, was, he is. He okay. is just funny, but he did actually, like, win some shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. And I just found out, like, he had a radio show on WGCI, like, back, like, a while ago. Like, I was just finding this stuff out about him, and I'm like, he's been in my life my entire, <laughs> like, time. Why you ain't say nothing? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, he... He was kind of like my driving force. I was like, Dad, don't be scared to do comedy. Come on. Like, you can do it. You're not old. Like, you still, you you look young still. Come on, do it. Whatever. So I got on stage and started, get, started getting on stage, like, maybe just to invite my family out and be like, hey, see, y'all can do it too. <laughs> and so. So you've been watching it up until that point. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, I have been watching. I think I first got on stage, um, like, 20, had to be, like, 2013, 2015. Okay. And I never, like, you know, had done it. I suck ass pretty well. <laughs> um, and then, um, I mean, I got sympathy last because, for one, I'm cute. And for two, people like me. And for three, um, I did have some good little knee slappers. I'm not going to lie. Like, mm-hmm. my, my jokes are still, like, yesterday I did talk about, like, the party line or whatever, but... It was kind of like stuff like that where I was already talking about like big girl problems or <laughs> whatever. So, um, yeah, he was like my driving force. And um, then I caught the bug. Like, I tried to start like really pursuing comedy in 2020. And then like everything shut down. And then I was like, oh, damn, okay. So, yeah, it's like I tried to start. <laughs> and then I started again in 2021. And then that's like my. One year of actually hitting mics every week, writing, um, meeting people, networking, getting on shows, being paid for shows. Um, what else? Doing podcasts, you know, um, connecting with people, getting my name out there, traveling. And so um, it's been pretty great overall so far. That is what impresses me is how you just hit the ground running. You, you, now we're done? No, I'm not done. I'm just... Oh, you're trying to... Okay, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Um... Um, you, you just hit the ground running. Like for me, where I was from, it was a arduous grind because I was living in a place where there was no comedy around and desert white people aren't funny. And so I was living in a place where nothing was funny and there was no place to learn how to do it. And so I kind of had to, um, I started my own scene out there and I think that it like literally from the ground up, me and this other dude, George Ferrito. We we created a comedy scene in yeah, the desert. No. Yeah, it, it, there's. I learned a lot from it. I learned how to produce shows. I learned how to stay focused. I learned how to organize myself in comedy. But then it was a detriment in other ways because we didn't have anybody to look up to. Mm-hmm. Like when I, I when I found out that you'd been doing it a year and some change, but you had been specifically in the South Side. You've been in the South Side of Chicago watching the like the best in the country, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, I can see how like you kind of sponged all of that in and then put it on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I'm curious, what was the South, what was the South side comedy scene like pre COVID versus post COVID? Cause I've been hearing about the North side and what it was like, and I haven't really had anybody explain the South side of it. Um, well, it really depends on the room to be honest, but it's, it, it's always been packed. Uh, um, at a place in particular called Francis uh, Cocktail Lounge um, and they are always packed so um, even before like Jokes and Notes closed it was like the first black owned woman comedy club on mm-hmm. the south side of Chicago and um, she also like uh, Mariella Lindsay she also like started um, helped to start All Jokes Aside and like pr- clubs that made Bernie Mac and other you know, um, Chicago comedians like big or, and famous. So um, she had a role in that. But I don't know. It, it's always been kind of packed. Um, people never wiped the mic off ever <laughs> that I've ever seen ever. Yeah. Ever. So um, <laughs> I don't know. I, it's always just been a good time. Uh, I think COVID did kind of put a damper on a lot of things when it comes to uh, just in general how people are or feeling, or, um, you know, trying to dap people or hug them. Like, it's an awkward exchange now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if people just will hug you and just come up to you and be extremely, uh, I think black people in general are not touchy-feely, but just, like, extremely um, just reach out to you and say, you know, hey. <laughs> so, uh, what is that? It's it's individualist versus collectivist culture. Mm-hmm. And, and, and black culture is a collectivist culture. And there's a, you're, like, you're, um, What's it? What is that? Your cer- where? There's a word for it. Mm-hmm. Personal space. Mm-hmm. That bubble that people have is a little closer the in black. black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mexicans too. Like, th- mm-hmm. there's something about there's something about the way the culture works where you're just closer. Mm-hmm. You, almost, you need each other more. Like in white culture, you can be kind of an individual. You can be your own person and separate and be fine for the most part. Yeah. You kind of need other black people to survive in a lot of ways, but. That last night, um, thank you for driving, by the way. Uh, <laughs> no I'm like, I'm so glad that 
I got to go down. We got to go down there. All oh, that was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Just Me. Yeah, shout out to Just Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were talking about. I I I, I don't want to. You know what I'm about to say. You know exactly what I'm about to say, huh? I can't remember what you said, but what was it? You uh, you're on people's heels, people people on your heels or something, some shit. I don't know. Basically, <laughs> basically like you. Oh, on people's ass. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Where is that drive coming from? Like that passion. Oh. Let me get those tears, baby. Let me get those tears. You're now. so silly. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, where's, um, that, where's that come from? Uh, the passion is. Uh, I've just always been a. Uh, connoisseur of comedy mm-hmm. um at a young age i think uh the first thing i watched which i was <laughs> i still like put in my jokes now which is still funny to me 30 years later is like the nutty professor like mm-hmm. it's still funny to me like the perspective of just it was sherman like it, it all of that still makes me laugh like martin still makes me laugh like fresh prince still makes me laugh and i'm all about like iconic um I guess not iconic like jokes, but iconic like culturistic stuff when it comes to comedy um, and black people, and, and so I just love being a part of that, especially in Chicago. And then I would like to, you know, network with other people and you know travel like we did mention uh, yesterday. So I'm I'm not boxing myself in, but I do want to craft like my people. Like I know my people are out there, so I'm just trying to find my people. Okay, so that's. That's something I'm excited to learn about too with you. Is um, it's a little bit about me. Mm-hmm, yeah, uh, I mean, not a, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, about me here. Um, uh, so when I was where I was from, I I got to a point where I wasn't getting enough stage time, um, and like regular stage time. I I was at a point where I was basically hosting shows every for seven days a week, damn near. But it was the same places, and there wasn't that variety. And so I um, I used to go busking in college, uh, which performed me and play music on the street. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a bass guitar right here. I would make a loop and I would rap and I would like make money and all that shit. Okay. And so then when um, when the maybe a few months, maybe like half a year before the pandemic started, um, I was frustrated because I wasn't getting enough time. And I, I remember like, well, I know how to perform on the street i've been doing that for years mm-hmm. uh music and, and stand-up are different but like i know the mechanics of it um and i remember like, i heard that like dave Chappelle did that he just went out in like washington or something and just was talking and so i got out and i went on the street like every weekend mm-hmm. and i just performed on the street and one of the things i realized was and this this also went into the pandemic as well and one of the things i realized was i learned my fan base i learned my demographic really quickly because it was like the people who wanted to be there would be there and everyone else would leave and i was seeing patterns and i I think it was like five different types of demographics Mm -hmm. old white people love me Mm -hmm. because i i guess so i'm so lovable unless i say the thing that they (laughs) don't want oh yeah (laughs) they like old white people it's you know what old liberal white people (laughs) really love me and old conservative like white people will tolerate me because mm-hmm. of the way I articulate things which is fascinating uh, but all white people love me um fucking uh black nerds specific like specifically like the nerdiest black people mm-hmm. uh they're like yeah man speak the truth for us I can see that, yeah. uh <laughs> the, fucking uh we- weebs like anime weebs mm-hmm. uh, they they lose their shit when I make like a Rick and Morty reference, like oh, I know what that is, and then like <laughs> this this is the part that makes me uncomfortable. Uh, young young ladies, like it felt like you, you know Ashton Kutcher. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when he did that speech at like the Kids Choice Awards? Did you hear about that? Mm-hmm. And like the audiences, like the young girls were like, "It's Ashton Kutcher." But he's like, "No, you don't understand. Like this is really important." Mm-hmm. That's kind of how it <laughs> felt. Do, what do you think your... So those are like... That's w- what I go for now when I try to advertise myself. If I see someone in those demographics, I'm like, okay, that's my person. Who do you think your people are? Um, that was a really long-winded... Way. I don't know how often I'm going to do this with uh, marijuana. People, um, definitely different types of black women. Mm. Um, whether it's like 
spiritual type black women or eyelash holes. Mm-hmm. That's okay. They, I love eyelash holes or nail holes, you know. Um, <laughs> but it's different subsets of black women. Um, especially the older black women. Um, I haven't really. White men tolerate me. That, yeah. Like when I'm at Lincoln Lodge, they'll, you know, hee hee ha ha. They will laugh. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know if they like. I don't know. Anyway, uh, who else? Do you like advertise yourself at all when you like promote yourself? Um, I just post my little stuff there. You oh, know, okay. I haven't done like a like a real like um uh, like people was doing billboards and shit. And oh, I was like, yeah. oh yeah, I don't know how to do that yet. So that's, that's a lot of. Money. I'm open to learning um all the types of ways to advertise and uh, promote myself but my degree is in public relations so I'm, okay. I'm i'm pretty good i promise i'm not gonna fail myself like <laughs> no. i'm not so um yeah I, I was like okay i know what to do but i do get overwhelmed <laughs> after, after a show you seem like an introverted extrovert okay you think so <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i definitely don't like people as i got older yeah i used to um be a friend the friend that had like a thousand friends uh-huh. and all my friends and yeah, I'm my friend, so <laughs> I'm my friend. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I, I like people, but I don't. I really do like to be at home. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why when I get my momentum to hit mics, it's like, no, I have to hit these mics. This is what I said I was gonna do. This is the number I said I was gonna hit. I'm have to hit this number, or you know, I'm I'm failing myself or whatever. So it's always like just my own pressure I put on my own self to to keep my word to myself. That's um, good. <laughs> So, yeah. I think that's gonna get you far. Um, <laughs> do you do you talk to the audience after a show? I don't like to. Um, I I just dip. <laughs> really? Hey. It depends. I mean, most of the time, uh, I don't know. I don't like shows. I mean, I did have like a person buy me a drink before, like after a show. But after the drink, I gotta go home. I ain't trying to like really be. Yeah. Like. Follow me on Instagram. Okay, love and light. Peace. Okay, you're gonna be like a you're gonna be like a Frank Ocean. You just gonna you're gonna drop some shit and then disappear yeah. into the darkness. Okay, no, I get you. <laughs> um, what for you? Like, I really, I really want to get more Southside comics on this podcast, but they don't. They don't listen to me. <laughs> they, like they they like I I had Lily on, and then I hit up some other people, and it just it just I I feel like. Or I guess I should ask you: Is am I just gonna need to be around longer before they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. is that what it is? Yeah, head nod. I did a head nod you did to a head nod, <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I've been around. <laughs> I told you. I, I, okay, I turned twenty one in two thousand nine. The first, um, my birthday was in May. I went to Jokes and Notes when, as soon as I got back from college. Like mm. that was the first thing I think I did, and I was like, oh, I'm twenty one now. Like I could go to the comedy club. Yeah. Like excited, even though I never wanted to do comedy because I used to be extremely uh stage fright mm-hmm. extremely like um I had a bad experience at uh this theater camp <laughs> oh I need to hear about this <laughs> yeah. I had a bad experience at, the, at this um this theater camp called ETA back in the 90s <laughs> and um they should I had my shit together then they changed my lines up or something and anyway it was like one of those like TV type moments where like the lights are on you and then it's like the people in the audience, and then you just standing there out there by yourself. And I was like, well, shit, I don't know. Tell y'all. <laughs> they changed my shit up. So I, I ran off the stage crying. Like, I really did. And so I was like, I'm never getting on stage again. And then in high school, I was doing plays and stuff. And, um, like, we would write the plays. I would do, like, the uh, the set design and all of that stuff. And I like to do art. And um, so, it, yeah. So it, it built from there. Like, I was like, I can't, I can't be afraid of being on stage so i used to do karaoke for years and that was my thing like so so like when they have shows like jokey or whatever i'm like oh i love this show because you can mix both but i hope i answered the question i think so <laughs> that, the, 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 <laughs> oh shit i, I went might, a bunch of places but... I, I might have to have you on again we have to be sober or drinking because yeah it's it's a it's a yeah remembering things fuck with your memory anyway well, i think i yeah i think i did <laughs> Um, no, I just, it, my experiences in the North side, and the South side have been so starkly different mm-hmm. that I, I guess I wasn't anticipating that. Like, it's a segregated city for real. People wasn't lying. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's it's weird when like. You're from a place where everyone's white or Mexican for the most part, mm-hmm. and you're like you're aware of, that you're different from everybody, but mm-hmm. they're so unaware that you feel like you can't imagine any other feeling almost. Mm-hmm. And so when I came out here, I went to the South Side. Like the North Side felt different because of Chicago and that's different from the dead. Like it felt different, but there was enough, there was a familiarity in the types of people up there. And I went to the South side and there was a familiarity with people like my dad's side of the family or. <laughs> what that mean? Everybody oh, know their daddy's side is different. Than yeah. My dad's side. side of the family. A little, <laughs> a little different. Uh, different energy when you go to spice. Christmas. Yeah. A little, a little louder. Uh, a little, <laughs> a little more boisterous, if you will. Um, <laughs> Hi, Angelique. I, I'll hope you listen to this. That's my sister. Hey, um, she's a she's a, a director. Okay, come on now. Yeah, she got some shit on BT and, and all. It's wild. Um, Super dope. Yeah, we'll figure out what we're talking about. Uh, so okay, so <laughs> the feeling of like my dad's side of the family, or or when I was on like different basketball teams, and, <laughs> you know. That was so bad. It, it is what it is. That's that was my life. Uh, I also grew up in the '90s when. <laughs> When you're black, you're allowed to play basketball, or yeah. you could rap or sell drugs. Those are the things you're allowed to do, and that's mm-hmm. it. and theater's gay, apparently. Um, <laughs> that's where I grew up. But you know, people don't, don't realize like I've been around black people. Like I haven't been completely separated. Mm-hmm. So it was this feeling of warmth, this feeling like like uh, um, there's some like a connection that's really hard to describe. Mm-hmm. And there's also feeling of being an out, a complete outsider and, and like a fraternity, like you have to really earn your way into being respected and, and appreciated and even remembered. Mm-hmm. And there's something that there's parts of that that's really fucking frustrating. And then there's parts of that that I appreciate because when you do get those nuggets of affirmation, yeah. oh, I feel so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Like um, yesterday for you, like oh my god, yeah. If that was a regular room, a regular mic there, like we you know the weather, whatever. Yeah, the the, the young lady she would have gave the light at like four minutes, yep, and five because we already know who else coming in. Or we might get bumped or whatever the case may be. So I like to sometimes go out when it's snowing or whatever because you may get more time and you'll get the respect of the the host or the people that's there because they are actually listening to you. So. Mm-hmm. Back to you, Bob. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well I want to. I can we please, please make a point to go to the South Side more? Yeah, I want to. It's just like the public transit. It's hella different um spots. You, you can you can hit about three three mics in the night on out south. You just gotta time it right. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean we can, please throw me up first. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can definitely schedule some shit because because I don't like. It took. I was here for a few months before I found out about laugh therapy. Mm-hmm. I was like, it was like, it's like the South Side open mics are this underground railroad of Chicago that you just gotta, <laughs> you gotta meet the right person. They'd be like, hey man, hey dog, just so you know, one. It's like asking for like acid yeah. or something. Like, yeah, hey, you got, uh, the, the stuff. Yeah, man. You know? <laughs> if you go down on Ninety Third and and. <laughs> And Beaumont, it's like if you go down there, then you knock twice, uh, then you make a bird call, they let you downstairs into the cellar, <laughs> and in the cellar it's popping. It's like that's that's what it feels like. Have you ever yeah. seen um, um, <laughs> Queen and Slim? Yeah. You remember when there there's that little fun moment where they're they're in they're like like they, Alabama or somewhere. I think they're about like Alabama, mm-hmm. and they find this secret black club, Little and everyone's joint, in, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that, yeah, and they're there. That's and, how south side rooms are. <laughs> that's exactly how it feels. Where you're like, you can murder a nigga and you'll be okay. Yeah. Like, ain't nobody gonna say nothing. <laughs> Facts. And, yeah, or like how how you know everyone knew who they were, and they all just give a nut like yeah. you safe here. You like that's yeah. that's how it feels. I don't feel that in the north side. I don't feel this like. I don't feel that either. I mean, I'm yeah and it's like but it's not a it's not a uh it's not an attack on the north it's mm-hmm. like it's just a different feeling vibe. it's a different vibe mm-hmm. and and what just niche was saying last night about how like <laughs> north side comp they don't go to the south they, they don't fucking do it's it a few, it's, yeah, she said it's the for best. three a few she said three <laughs> Is that what it was? Is that the excuse, Just Niche, for your fingers? Did you did you sprain your finger? Three. 
brother man from the fifth floor. <laughs> um, um, but they they don't they don't do it. Mm-hmm. And I, for the life of me, I was about to say I don't. Like I do want to merge. I want us to like be better. I I did say that yesterday. Like yeah. I want us to kind of mingle a little more if we can, or try to connect. But it's always been like that. Always. I, I also learned. Hmm, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna figure out how to word this because <laughs> now we're going into gang territories. The South Side versus the North Side versus the improv. Like. I I had I did improv for like ten years. Mm-hmm. Um, I did all throughout high school. Okay. Yeah, I did throughout high school. I taught at my college, and I was at the National Comedy Theater in San Diego. Oh, that's why you're so good. See, come on, clap it up, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Okay, audience. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the cats will the cats are appreciative. Okay. Of me. Um, <laughs> but I did that for ten years, and so so like that skill is in me. Like I know how to do that, and mm-hmm. it's something that I don't think anybody knows really about yeah. me here and uh i i always heard rumblings in the north side that north side comics just don't fuck with improvisers and then the improvisers kind of don't care mm-hmm. and um so i was around improv people and I, it, they i'm trying to figure out how to word this because you're <laughs> you're giving me the all right now your head tilting on me i know i'm building up a lot of a lot of tension here <laughs> A great storyteller. Okay. Um, <laughs> hyper, hyper liberal, hyper, hyper white. Mm-hmm. And what I appreciate about the North Side comedians uh, is they are themselves. It's different subsets of North Side people. Yeah, then yeah. there's the it's punk rock yeah, North it's Side. A lot. It's a lot. There's the black people in the North Side. There's mm-hmm. the, there's the, uh, the, like the white female v- feeling mm-hmm. there's black women fe- like it, it, it it's like moving here this whole world has been opened up of mm-hmm. different styles and people yeah. i want to get everybody on this podcast because i haven't met anybody that is sim- really that similar to anybody else mm-hmm. it's crazy i we're, we'll, we'll get this on track whatever this is it'll go where <laughs> it needs to go um but I, I, how do you think, other than just going down there more often, which we will do, how do you think I can get more Southside comics to fucking do this? Because I want to hear that perspective. Yeah, you got to show up to the room. God damn it. All right. You got to introduce yourself. You can even start. You can follow somebody. You can reach out and send them a DM and say, hey, um, you know, I've been, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I do have a podcast. Yeah. I've been, uh, well, you don't say, don't sound like a creep. Like I've been watching your stuff yeah, for a no. while, but um, in the corner of the club, <laughs> yeah. checking your but no, style. Like I see you, I see you grinding. I see, you, you know, doing dope stuff. If you need like another outlet to, uh, you know, promote yourself or talk about stuff or have a dope conversation with a dope person, I'm your person. So you can just slide in or say hello and okay. introduce yourself in that way. It's not even like that scary. It's <laughs> you can save gas too by just sending a message instead of having to drive all the way out. Yeah. But make the first introduction first out south, and then you can message some someone. So don't just message someone randomly. Right. Okay. I'll do that. Then. Just you know, maybe if you see someone like, oh damn, they said they they killed that shit or they did yeah. a really great job. Like, okay, I want them to be on the show and we'll, let's talk about this more. Okay. All right. So yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What was your childhood? I'm pushing you out there like that. Oh, thank you. I well, it's it's helpful. It's like I was talking about this last night too. Uh, just the way the way I present myself is immediately understood. That like, okay, well, I'm not from around here, and in being here and the time I've spent here, I've I've kind of come to a place of like, oh, okay, I think I know who I am, and that's fine. Like, it's okay that they don't get me immediately. It's okay that like. Uh, you talk white. I understand where that's coming from because, like, yeah, I understand where that's coming from. But at the same time, it's really frustrating when when it's like, okay, now I got this extra hurdle I got to jump over for mm-hmm. you to actually listen to what the fuck I'm saying. You just seem like you're from the suburbs, uh, any suburb. It don't even have to be, like, you're from another state. Like, you could just be, oh, yeah, I'm from Schaumburg. Bam. Okay, Naperville. <laughs> I see you, Naperville. <laughs> 
I'm just kidding. But um, like I had mentioned a comic yesterday who um, I said they kind of sound similar, but yeah. people they did pretty good yesterday. I'm not even gonna shit on mm-hmm. them. Like they did a good job, and um, they they sound they don't sound like yeah, you know, bro. Yeah. So yeah. that's an example. It's not. It's so many different subsets too out south. Like. Yeah. Um, it's emo black people out south that said they little suicide jokes. Ooh, I want to see like, that. I want to see that. Know. Wearing Hot Topic down there? That's what Maybe one see. or two. You might see one or two. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, um, you were you're talking about WGCI. I, I keep seeing that. It's a radio station here. Is that, uh, I was about to be like, is that our 92.3 or 93.5 KGGI? That's, Something like that. Okay, so that's your that's Chicago's station. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's the station that... Um, Leon Rogers has been uh, working for. He's one of the um, like legendary Chicago comedians. Mm-hmm. Um, I get that vibe when he comes around. Yeah, you yeah. know. So he, yeah, he's at uh, Bartend every Wednesday. Open mic, come through. <laughs> <laughs> that dude. I mean, I've talked about. Um, I've actually talked about Just Niche and. Tiny Thickums a lot, yeah. uh, um, <laughs> especially when I first moved here. Yeah, I was like, oh, these these are are unique characters. Yeah. <laughs> but I actually haven't talked about Leon much, and he is also somebody that I'm very impressed by. Him and uh, who was the guy? He was also on the radio station, Swagless. Uh, he 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 referred to me as what was his name? You said Tony Scofield. No, no, no the, uh, he uh, he had glasses on, thin black dude. He was. He was. Uh, ra- yesterday. Yeah. What was this? About uh, Zach Boog. Zach Boog. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm like, wait. <laughs> All of them. Zach Boog, Tiny Thickums, Just Niche, Leon Rogers. Like when I think about them on stage, there is a comfort and an ease that is really hard to put into words. Like. Um, you also have that. You have this comfort and ease, and I have this comfort and ease. But when I watch them, and I assume that's because of how many years in the game mm-hmm. you, you've been, when I watch them, I'm like, oh, my God. you! It feels like I could be at Thanksgiving dinner with you right now. Like, you have made this feel so uh, intimate mm-hmm. and personal. And I don't think – I'm trying to th- – I, I don't <laughs> see – what's up? What's up? I'm like, no, go ahead. This is my, this is my analysis brain. Um <laughs> Like, okay, like when I watch Leon go into uh, uh, Bar 10, and it's rowdy, nobody gives a fuck. He has to, even him, he has to be like multiple times. All right, so we got comedians telling jokes. (laughs) You can either sit and watch the comedians or go outside and shut the fuck up. Like, he over and over, he has to be like, listen. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I, I don't think I've ever seen him bomb i've i've seen him uh i've seen joke struggle or shit not hit whatever yeah. but like i've never seen him be, i've never been like Ugh. like i've never yeah. <laughs> you know of course not and same with just niece that's too. very rare out south though i'm not even going that that love that caliber i think that is just a that's I, that's what i'm trying to like they they inspire me so much that's why it's best to kind of do both at the same time like do both types North of, of rooms sa- yeah, yeah. at the same time because it's so different. It does build that muscle. Yeah. Like that it flexes the muscle in a way where you like, oh shit, I feel like I worked out. Like yeah. I feel like I got my shit off. Like I feel in a good space. I feel good about getting on stage tonight or or meeting new people or getting my face out there or getting on a new podcast. Like, you mm. know, so do you is there is there anybody in the South Side that you is like a mentor to you at all? Um, they probably just don't know it. Uh just because <laughs> I've just been watching people like from a distance. I'm very observant yeah. and um just kinda like to I mean, I do give people their flowers and let them know like, hey, you you've really inspired me. Um mm-hmm. and uh, you know, but um I don't know. I love to support Jess Nisha and go to her rooms and um even watch her growth like for from the last few years she'll be celebrating like 10 years of comedy coming up so that's 10 years of muscle that she has that whether it's you know five people 2500 whatever she got it so i let her um you know all the lady comedians all all different subsets of uh, comics out south um even like the the ogs the legends the people that you might have saw like the kenny howells who was on def jam like back in the day or um 
even you know Marlon Mitchell and uh, Michi Hall and Lil Rel and so like even to watch Lil Rel's growth and then um like cause he used to host the open mic at uh the place I mentioned called Jokes and Notes mm. and I would go there every Wednesday and when I tell you like it just used to crack like when I tell you pre pre pandemic whatever that room used to be like a roar and laughter like hearing people howl out and die really die laughing is like a goal of mine. I don't want people to be like, oh, that was funny. Like, yeah. that was funny. Or like, they, like, I want people to laugh at my shit. And like, really laugh at Do you... how they stomach hurt it. <laughs> that's what I'm used to, like, uh, being around, I guess. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm like, no, we got to, no, we have to do better. We have to do more. And I think the difference is North Side Rooms are more content with just as they are. Mm-hmm. And um, growth is always good. So I just want to say that. Yeah, I do you in terms of of I guess to keep this comparison thing going of the north and the south it feels like north is writers and south is performers. Mm-hmm. Do, where where's your balance at? Are you more of a writer, are you more of a performer? How do you go about writing? How do you go about performing? Basically just tell me your entire uh, process <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> now, um I'm definitely in the middle. I want to be more of a performer. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, like, I really want to be a lot more comfortable on stage. And I want to do a little bit more physical comedy. Okay. Like, I, 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 physical comedy to me has always been funny. But, um, yeah, I used to I used to always try to make my mom laugh, like, with falling or just, like, doing stuff. Like, I used to just fall a lot. Like, but it wouldn't hurt. Like, I'd make myself fall in a way, like, we'll where it was comical. Shopping. Yeah, mm-hmm. so... I don't know. It's always like JB Smooth and like other physical comics from back in the day and watching them. And I'm like, okay, like we can add a little bit more. I don't want to be off the stage sweating, dying, but yeah. I do just want to be a little bit more loose, a little bit more physical. Um, and yeah, I love to write. Uh, I did mention to you yesterday that, um, yeah, I got like, uh, you know, my, my jokes are in the three digits, you know, mm. so I'm excited about that. And I'm probably only doing like 10% of material right now, but. Sometimes you got to keep your shit safe because mm-hmm. people will take your jokes, okay? Really? Still? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, look, we ain't going to flip the table yet. Uh, but um, Some shit happened? We good, we good. You okay. Know? <laughs> I, have, I had somebody apologize to me while doing my joke in my face. But, oh, yeah. wow, wow, like, wow, okay. Like yesterday I did my nut rag joke. Of like, course, classic. You know, look. Classic nut rag joke. Yeah, you know, and so you ain't really heard that like that. You know, yeah. at least put in the way... And then they gonna say the same thing. I was like, "You is crazy. <laughs> you ain't nobody been saying that. I've been watching. I've been. I've been knowing. I go to all the rooms hmm. like a stalker when it come to comedy. Like, oh, so yeah. you seem to know. You seem to understand the culture very well. Um. So yeah, I'm sorry. That was some of my process. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Oh, we checking off the look. <laughs> I wanna. I wanna. No, I want. You know, I want the audience to learn about you and. <laughs> And understand you as a person. Um, uh, <laughs> do you do you feel like like are you well known in the north of the south? Like, do you think people know who you are? Comics specifically, obviously, not the average person walking down the street. But would you say that if if um, if I were to go into any room in the north side and be like, "Hey, is Allie here," you think people would be like, "Yeah, she hear that." Um, well, that was I a think weird get- question I just asked. <laughs> no, it's not weird. I think I'm getting to the point where people um, know me. Like when I went to Laugh Factory this past Tuesday and they called my name, mm. I-, I know they like to be supportive and shit, but they did like actually like cheer, like, oh, Allie K. And I was like, I don't even know most of y'all, Ooh. but I'm thankful, you know, call, you know, go ahead. And so I like to clap too and support people, but um, yeah, I don't know. That was, that, was a, that was a strange question. And I worded it strange. Well, it's okay. It's, it's not. It's, it, it must be perfect. Uh, and then you were in theater in high school. Yeah, I did theater. Ooh, what did you do? What, um, what like what place? Oh, we made we we made up. We were, <laughs> my school was ratchet. We we made up and did our own plays. Like we okay. had we had one play called <laughs> we had one one hood ass play called um like Christmas on nine, <laughs> Christmas on ninety fifth and the Dan Ryan like. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> it was a Christmas Christ. play on the train line. Yeah. That is the most Chicago. <laughs> 
Wait, wait, wait. The play, the play was set on the L. Yeah, the play was like, and people was like socks, socks, like and then they're coming. Oh like, my god. <laughs> Fruities, like whatever they sell in weed. I mean, not not the end. They wasn't talking about. We couldn't talk about weed, but. Oh, I'm sure it was in the first draft. And then the teacher was like, "We we're not. Yeah, we're not putting that. In. We're not putting that." In but um, yeah, we had hella Christmas plays and like um. We had, <laughs> <laughs> and we we had to do like our, our final like plays for like the end of the semester or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's shit like that that makes me love Chicago so much. Is the, you like which one? No Shakespeare. No, no. We made our. I'm sorry. We made our own shit up. <laughs> it is. It is so distinctly Chicago. <laughs> like I think. I think that's what I love out here is the culture. There's. Yeah. There's a um, k- k- feeling <laughs> th- to Chicago that's really hard to describe. And it's not. I've never been. Have you been in New York? Mm-hmm. Okay. I, t- tell me if I'm wrong here. But New York feels like it's gritty, almost grimy. Mm. Chicago does it feels rough but not grimy. Yeah. It feels like I don't know, like uh uh <laughs> this is gonna be a weird analogy. <laughs> you know when you watch like a cartoon or whatever, or one movie or whatever, and there's that character that's like he's kinda like a bully, he's really mean. Mm-hmm. Then by the end of it, you realize he had a heart of gold mm-hmm. the whole time. That's what Chicago feels like. It feels like a bully that has a heart of gold. Uh-huh. Um, That's a great analogy. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> where do you see yourself in five years? What's where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, I thought you said wait till I see myself. I'm like, here, psychic, y'all. <laughs> Shit. Okay, my palm. Here, read it. Read my palm. Uh, where do I see myself in five years? That's a great question. Okay, one, a laugh. <laughs> okay, two, um, <laughs> um, blessed and highly favored. No, uh, I don't know. I want to um I want to do like theater shows. Okay. Like I want to be at Radio City. Like I want to do the Beacon. I want to do um the Chicago Theater. I want to do um you know all the theaters. Like I'm not a stadium type bitch, but uh you know, I rock out. You know, I do a little a little um Christmas on the <laughs> run 95th and then Dan Ryan. There you go. <laughs> but no, um I definitely want to uh I got some stuff going on, but I definitely want to have my name out there more uh, when it comes to comedy mm-hmm. uh, and travel and open up for people. That's on my little list to open up for, like my 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 list list. You know, like my here go the tears, all oh, shit. They yes. coming? No, nah, but damn um, it! <laughs> ah. ah, hold it, no, hold it. Nah, but not my list emotion. of like my list of people who I really look up to and um, aspire. Uh, I mean, of course, I want to be like myself, but people who I've just watched, like legend, legend, and I was like, please don't die. I'm coming. Like, <laughs> please hold on. Take your sea moss and, and take all your vitamins because I, I would love to meet you and do things and work with you. So, um, That's, I have a lot of hopes for the future, though. I'm, I, I'm excited. It sounds like it. That yeah, I'm thankful. When I asked you where that passion comes from, that uh, however long ago in this podcast, that moment. <laughs> That moment is where is that? What is that? That moment you 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 it, like your passion about this emanates when you talk about it in that way. Uh-huh. What is going on in your head, movies, when that happens? Um, yikes! Uh, what's going on in my head? I just what are you picturing right now? Um, I don't know. I'm probably at the Emmys. You know, like you my, can... my show. My show got it. You know, all it's all it's just. It's 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 justice and all this uh, whatever you you supposed to get. <laughs> like you can physically picture yourself on stage earning awards. Yeah, earning. like I see my mom in the audience, like me crying, like yeah. me doing the the mama speech, like the look at her, like oh, uh, you know. So that's really what um. That's where that passion. Is yeah, from. that's where the passion comes from. It almost feels like you're experiencing the moment before it happens, almost. Oh, uh, I think that's how you gotta do to manifest. You know, a little bit. You gotta mm, kind of okay. feel it and be in it, and um, and not only do those things, but work towards that, um, in the smallest ways possible and the biggest ways too. That makes sense. So you gotta, um. It's like working out, which I don't like to do. Um, I work out on stage, for I work out in the gym. That's yeah. my thing. Um, I had a joke about that, but I I forgot what I did with it. <laughs> Speaking of working out and all that stuff, and and being a a, a curvy young uh, black woman, uh, do you feel discriminated is not the right word, but do you feel like do people 
<laughs> I'll figure out how to word this. Do I feel like uh, left out of any way or something? Okay. If I go and speak, use myself as an example, mm-hmm. as, a, as a black man from the suburbs, mm-hmm. when I'm around other black men from the suburbs, there's this understanding. Like I get this, we just get each other. Mm-hmm. Um, now I assume the same goes with you and like other black female comedians. But when I'm in, let's say, like a conservative place, mm-hmm. I immediately feel like, oh, okay, so I'm, I'm this is a different vibe. Like, d- god damn it, I don't know how, how to word this question. Do you know what I'm saying? No, do I feel, um, like what, do is, I... what is your experience? As a as a as a curvaceous yeah yeah like how do woman. people I f- fuck this question <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to what's fuck... my experience being being overweight <laughs> no no that's not it's I'm about to go home and cry oh, <laughs> it was going so well then he handed me bagels <laughs> right. um no but I uh, fuck I don't know I don't know how to word it. Whatever. Um. So, okay. I think I know where you're going. I'll All just right. answer. I'll just answer anyway. Um. No, I think uh, like I'm pretty much well recepted in any place that I go in. Mm-hmm. Um, like I had a show in Cary, Illinois, which I had never been to before, and it was uh at this place called Spirit Water. It's like a um. It's like an alcohol, uh, like a meadery or like a winery or something. Mm. But they had like hard alcohol. And I was like, okay. And um, it was all white people there. And I was like, oh, I don't know how this going to go because I've never been here. And I don't know what the vibe is. I don't know if there's some stickers on the car or what or the truck. <laughs> so um, I was like, I don't know. But I had, I mean, even though it wasn't like packed, I did have people come up to me after and say, you know, I enjoyed you or you had a good set. I was like, oh, okay, I was, you know, I was concerned, but I like to be well receptive wherever I am, no matter what my size is. As long as you're cute, don't just don't be dusty or musty or pop or um, yeah, that's it. You'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you for answering my very in my Chicago question. way. <laughs> and you're very very Chicago way. Do you, when do you think you'll be able to start living off of this? Not be rich, but like. Uh, well, to be honest, I haven't um, had like a job job since 2016. Oh, I'm not homeless. Um, I'm not sucking <laughs> dick for money yet. And um, no, uh, I don't know. I I kind of uh, I'm kind of in that space now, like where I'm uh, transitioning things. I mean, I am a makeup artist and a loctician outside of telling my jokey jokes but um and speaking of that i need to get my shit fixed okay yeah yeah we'll work on that okay, too yeah and um so i don't know I'm, I'm i would definitely like to this year like start you know working my way to to you know booking a lot more shows like i told myself this year i wanted to book like a hundred paid shows Jesus. And then I was like, okay, calm down. Like, I, I was like, wait, I feel stressed out when I said it. And I was like, okay, what's this, March? All right, if I get 50 paid book shows, that's like a decent amount. Yeah. I'd be thankful. And then from there, you set your number, and then you try to, try to, you know, tack that little goal off. So you, you Let me know. I'll, I'll, open, I'll open for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, this my homeboy, Riverside, motherfucker. Okay. Just, just give me some stage time. <laughs> just Lord almighty. <laughs> Yeah, that stage, ugh, I can't get over how much. It was so nice. It seemed refreshing. It was, Super fucking It's not refreshing. gonna always be like that, though. I'm I happy know. it was like a low pressure room. Nice. Like I did tell you, like sometimes I go there and be like, okay, um, damn, it's <laughs> packed in here. Oh, yeah. So I like that. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. That's, that's like my main thing is when can I just live off of this mm-hmm. in a level of comfort? Like, I don't wanna be. You know, I don't want to be stressed out and, and freaking out about how I'm going to pay my bills. I want to feel like, oh, okay, I'm like. Uh, so what's your number? Everybody got a number. A number? What, Fuck. What makes know. you feel? What, what, what do you think teach, you could bring in? Every- teacher salary. If I had a teacher salary, okay. I would be. It, and teachers don't get paid enough. Mm-hmm. So, right. you know, uh, if I'm living off of comedy with a teacher salary, I'd be like, oh, okay. Be good. Yeah. I'd be like, this isn't this. This is a pretty cool life to live. Mm-hmm. Um. And I think my approach to it has been obviously get better. The number one thing is just continue to get better. Uh, and 
and build a fan base. Mm-hmm. Like it seems yeah, like I'm trying to find my people. Right, your people. We were talking yeah. about that earlier. If 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 you, you can just get those people to believe in you, mm-hmm. and they almost like want to live vicariously through what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you can get those, <laughs> does that make sense? You know what I mean? No, for real. Yeah. Um, which is a weird feeling, I guess, but whatever. Um, if you can get those people to support you, then the others kind of come. And mm-hmm. it's it's just the process of it is a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember um, my uh, I had a friend, and, um, well, she's still my friend. She's my Facebook, my, my Instagram friend. But she, uh, like, drove all the way up to Laugh Factory to, like, see me go up at Laugh Factory for the three-minute open mic. Wow. And I felt so so bad because she was like oh if i would have known it was like only three minutes i was like if i would have known you was coming like but i was thankful and like that she came and so even like pre-pandemic um when i told you i tried to start that first time those couple of months Mm -hmm. um (laughs) i had like a fan she was like hey i saw you at dj sports bar or i saw you here and i'm like Oh well, I got one fan, and I was like, yeah. "The world shut down. I don't have no fans." <laughs> like, all I, where's my one? Where's the person? Like, so yeah. it's always a good experience, you know, to have people That's a and process. find your people that come up to you and because you know I welcome that, but I'm not gonna be like trying to mingle. Know, yeah. But, all right, see you, boo. Like, all right, <laughs> have a great night. Okay, be safe. Do you feel like right now you have a little fan base, <laughs> a little group? No. Okay. All right. I don't know. Probably do. I probably laugh, but I mean, we we'll see. I if, have. If you're listening to this and you're a fan, you let her know, please. Yeah, you know, cash app, dollar sign, Ali K jokes. <laughs> Thank you. That's how you let me know. Okay, that's probably why I ain't got no fans. That's they be like, bitch, I ain't got no money. This for the guest. Yeah, give, just give it a like if you're a fan. That's <laughs> <so> simple. Um. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess in wrapping it up, yeah. I, can we please go? Can I please just ride with you to play this sport because mm-hmm. it's. It's appreciated, and I'll buy you drinks and get you some marijuana and (laughs) gas. Um, Yeah. Well, this has been an experience. (laughs) I'm going to get pizza. Okay, this has been great. Woof, woof. Uh, I'm not even ending it properly. Okay, go ahead. No, well, because normally I just... do the countdown in five. Okay, four, three, two, the end.